There's nothing like a good shipwreck story to stir the imagination. This state is home not only to many historic shipwrecks, but also to an internationally recognised marine archaeology course. Now, as Simon Roll reports, the people behind that course are working on new ways to preserve Australia's lost ships, without the multi-million dollar costs that usually come with it. Most shipwrecks yield treasure of some description, and that's exactly what today's expedition is hoping for. Um, one of the things that they produced was this. And if you... Mark Staniforth is Associate Professor of Archaeology at Flinders University. He's taking this group out to the ship's graveyard in the mangroves around Garden Island. But the wrecks here aren't the unfortunate victims of some distant disaster. They're all here by design. Why do they call it the ship's graveyard? Well, this was the place from the early part of the, uh, the 1900s um, to 1945 where they dumped all the ships. And the thing about South Australia is that it, there's no deep water, um, so you can't take them out to sea. This is what remains of the Dorothy H. Stirling. It's one of the largest ships in the graveyard. Now three mangroves grow out of it, but in its day the Dorothy H. Stirling was a handsome six-masted schooner. And despite only being a few years old, the American vessel ended up here. I think because they were building ships very quickly at the time and they were trying to build them very large for timber carriers and they were building them out of green timber. And as a result, the thing um, really wasn't in very good shape. So it was condemned basically by the Lloyd's Register. The treasure that divers hope to pry from the Dorothy H. Sterling is knowledge. They're taking measurements, not of the ship itself, but as Flinders PhD student Deborah Sheffy and the Department of Environment and Heritage Amir Khan explain measurements of the water in which the ship rests. We're looking at the natural corrosion rates of historic shipwrecks in South Australia and uh, trying to measure and quantify that rate of corrosion. So we're out here taking those measurements? Well, and that's the purpose of this exercise, is to determine um, the rate at which the ship is degrading, because it is an important piece of our maritime heritage. Um, and so it's something that we do want to conserve and preserve for the future generations to come out and be able to enjoy it. Amongst other things, the amount of oxygen surrounding the Dorothy H. Sterling is one of the keys. It's the enemy of the iron fasteners that hold the ship together. Nevertheless, it is perhaps surprisingly wooden shipwrecks that can better survive the elements. Take the world's most famous wreck, the Titanic. It's made of steel and is decaying at a rapid rate of knots. Then there's the wooden Swedish warship, the Vasa. Like the unsinkable Titanic, the unthinkable happened to the Vasa. It sank on its maiden voyage in 1628. When it was raised from the mud of Stockholm Harbour more than 300 years later, the Vasa was remarkably intact. But once exposed to the atmosphere, the Vasa, or indeed any other wooden wreck, requires extensive, expensive preservation techniques. We now know enough from around the world about what it costs to conserve the material from sites like Mary Rose and Vasa and things like that. It costs a vast amount of money. Mark Staniforth thinks there's a cheaper way. It involves reburying artefacts and wrecks to exclude as much oxygen as possible. What Flinders University is trying to find, with help from the Department of Environment and Heritage, is the optimal way of doing that. Not too much mud and sand and not too little. If you can rebury a site, you can slow down the rate of deterioration and um, that will enable you to preserve it for longer. So instead of it, say, disappearing in the next 10 or 20 years, it might last 50 or 100, or indeed in some cases there are shipwrecks that are known to have been around for 3,000 years. The Dorothy H. Sterling, though, won't be the first ship in South Australia to benefit from that knowledge. That will be a ship called the Solway, which sank at Victor Harbour during a storm after running aground in 1837. The Solway is a much more important vessel, a um, much more significant vessel. Um, it's one of the earliest shipwrecks in South Australia. It was a whaling vessel that came out with the South Australian Company in the 1830s. But for the project to continue, it will need to find some real treasure. Jay Weatherall is the Minister for the Environment, and the researchers invited the Minister along to show him their work, and to be frank, to try and pry a bit of extra loot out of him. 
pumping money into to old wrecks is really important. It, it helps us to understand our history. Um, the, the whole question of our, our built heritage is, is a, 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 um, a source of, of an enormous pride for South Australians and, and no less our maritime archaeological heritage and uh, that's why it's important for us to be investing in that area. Are you going to give the project the money it needs to continue on? Well, look, we'll, we'll certainly be looking at that. I mean, it's always difficult uh, in government balancing all of the competing needs, but um, we know that they've got some applications in for grant funding and uh, we'll certainly be looking at them favourably. And Mark Staniforth says with just a little bit of support, South Australia and indeed the nation's historic shipwrecks will perhaps at last have found a safe harbour. And that's State Line for this week. If you want to contact us or look back through our story archive, go to abc.net.au slash stateline slash sa.